Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we start a fun project. We're gonna, we, we bought a new CNC machine and we start assembly today. And I get the whole bottom frame done um, with the linear rails and the, tra and the gear track on it. And that's as far as I got. And that'll be part one today, today's video. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe, like it, and I will see you next time. Later. Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today I want to discuss the Avid CNC machine. And I, I researched getting, buying a CNC for a long time, and I finally bit the bullet, and I bought this one right here. It's a 4x8, and um, let's see, Pro CNC Kits, 4x8, this one right here. And I got it with the leg kit, so it's going to look just like this. And the reason I chose this one is, at first I was looking at a Laguna, and they were 100% made in China. And I don't, I try to buy a lot of stuff that's made in America if I can. And most of the stuff from this Avid CNC seems to be made in the USA. I know all the 8020 aluminum is made in the USA. And it, the 8020 aluminum I've worked with before, so it's a really good material. Anyway, this is the machine, and part one, we're going we're gonna to start to assemble this thing. And right here, you go here, click on the instructions, go to your machine, 4x8 Pro Series. And right here, it's, the instructions from Avid website are really good. Um, tools required. So you need a metric ball in wrenches, 2.5, 3, 4, 5, 6. Gives you all the list of the tools that you need. I would actually suggest um, also having some calipers. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do right up here is the base assembly. And that's what, that's what it's going to look like. So we'll go down here. So first thing you need to do is start learning how to ins you insert these caps and these socket head screws and then you use the M8 roll-in T-nuts and you start putting this stuff together. The first thing I need to do is actually um, put together six of these legs and you got your leveling foot, your socket screws, hex nut, foot plate, and these are all adjustable legs so that you can adjust. So that's the first thing I need to do is put those together and then put these cross members on six and a half inches from the bottom. They give you, the instructions are really good. Shows you even what kind of tools. So this is the first thing we're gonna do is put these together. Let's get started. The first thing I do is start figuring out these little roll-in T-nuts. And I use this blue tape because it's easier to put them in. I actually put these in backwards at first, so I had to take them out. But if you, you, if you use the blue tape, then you can they won't fall out when you take it over there and, or when you start sliding your, your legs on. So that's what I was doing right here. First I figured out that I had the T-nuts in backwards so I had to flip them all back over. There's a few little learning curves but it's, it's basically pretty easy. And then here's the leg, my first leg that I'm going to slide on here. And then basically the measurement from the bottom of the leg to the bottom of that is six and a half inches. You can see the bottom foot all installed. So I mark this as six and a half and then tighten them up. A lot of, I see a lot of guys, they, they get those um, little handheld ratchets. That probably would have been a good idea. The, Milwaukee drill was a little bit bulky, but I was able to I was able to do it. There's the first one. Looking pretty good. This this room is dedicated to the CNC. I do have a water heater in there and a forced air unit, but that's all that's going to be in there is just the CNC. And I've I've pre um you saw that blue hose that was hanging down. I've pre-plumbed it for 
um, dust system using the Rockwell um, dust, right, dust collection system. Now I mark all these feet, I basically put them all at an inch and a half, and then if I need to adjust them, I'll adjust them later. I'm just setting them all at an inch and a half from the bottom. Only one of the legs, the leg, so it has three kits for this four by eight, four leg kits, and one of the leg kits, they didn't drill the holes for the little cap, the little caps to go in on one side of the leg. And that was a little upsetting, but I figured out that I had the right size drill bit and I could just drill these out and, ma and make it work. Sometimes you got to improvise. And uh, so anyway, yeah, that was a bummer, but it did turn out and I did get it done. And here's all three leg sets. Next up, we need to, we need to do this piece right here, which is the electronics bar extrusion simple little piece it shows you right here that you have to keep the bar four and three quarter from the top and that's the next step in this procedure let's get started this little electric mounting bar was really easy you basically set this uh, I believe it was four four inches from the top and I mark it and then tighten that up I really like the 80 20 aluminum. It's really strong, it's lightweight, super rigid, and it, um, it does a really good job of, um, to make frames or boxes or all kinds of stuff. Next up is the, these, um, these big rails. At the top of the legs, you have to install these fasteners on all four corners, and then also in the middle, you need to fasten this or install this splice bar on these two middle sections. And then you can put the, the main rails in, which are these, these rails. And there's two different sizes. One of them's, now here what you need to do is on this front piece, it needs to be 15 and three quarter from the edge to the edge, the inside edge on both of these. And then here you can see the top splice bar and here's what it should look like when you're done. Let's get started. First thing I do is put the little pieces in the tops and I start on the first two sets of legs and you have to hold this front piece, I believe it's 15 and three quarters. So it sticks out the front 15 and three quarter. And um, yeah. That's really the only measurement for this. Now where I'm, that set, second set has a splice bar on it, like a six inch splice bar. So I set these at 15 and three quarter, just like the plans show. Give it a little mark. Tighten it up. You want to double check all your measurements all the time, make sure, because th this thing really needs to end up really square when you're done. It'll help, it'll help in the future when, you, when you're putting all the gears and everything on. If it's nice and square, it'll be a lot easier. And here you can see I'm tightening up the top splice bars. It's got a splice bar on the bottom and the top. Keeps it really rigid. Next up, we need to do this table cross member assembly. Same situation. The only difference with these is they have a double T nut. And it shows you exactly how to do it. You can see right here the double T nut. And then you have all these pieces. And you need to insert them just like that. And then it should end up looking like this when you're done. Let's get started. These were a little tricky to slide both sides in. You had to, basically it's the same thing. These little caps, the hex head uh, Allen screws, and these little double T nuts. But you couldn't thread it on too far at one time, otherwise the other side wouldn't thread on. 
So I would start them, I would start one side and then get the other side on. But these you didn't have to tape because once you had both of them on, they, they couldn't, they had no way of coming apart. So that made it a little easier. So basically this, there's a four of these caps on each end and two, t, two double T-nuts on each end. And I got a lot of them to do. It's funny, while I was working, I looked out, I looked out the window and I saw these turkeys and I hadn't seen the turkeys out here since last year. And I look out the window and there's just a herd of them cruising up the, cruising up my front uh, or by my shop window. And this big, this big buck was just laying out there enjoying the day. Anyway, right here, I get these things straightened out. I cut a custom piece of wood, just like they said, 14 and 3 16 And then I clamped it and tighten these things up. Now, if I do it right, I should be able to, once I get it all, the CNC all operating, I should be able to use one of Avid's templates to cut my spoil board and it should line up with everything that's here. Anyway, I get this part done and move on to the next. Next up, we need to put these cross supports in. And these are all aluminum cross supports, pre-drilled, and they have rolling T-nuts and a socket head cap screw. We have quite a few of these to do, and it should end up looking like that. So you see we have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Looks like 12 pieces. Let's get started. The rolling T-nuts make it pretty easy because you can put these in there and they're kind of spring-loaded so they don't go sliding down the bar. And you basically use the same Allen head socket um, straight through to the T-nut. And these, these worked pretty good. I was pretty happy with how stiff it was. It was a little bit of a pain, you know, getting, being down on your knees. I like working on the bench a lot better. Uh, so I did as much, I put together as much stuff on the bench as possible, but eventually you got to Eventually you got to get down on the ground and put some of this other stuff in. But yeah, this is, uh, I, I forget how many of these there were. Two, four, six. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's about 10 of these, 10 of these bars. And it didn't take very long. Next up, we square, checked for square. The next thing we need to do is install the linear rail and gear installation. And the first thing is the linear rail. And basically you put all these little screws in with the little T-nuts and slide it down the track. And there's two pieces on each side. And it's pretty critical that you use these, um, they give you a guide block. Right here is the block, um, they call it a rail alignment jig. And I use this, I put one on each end, tighten the two ends, and then I move this block along the rail to make sure that this thing was really straight. I'll show you how I did it. Let's get started. The first thing I do is fill all these holes with the little screws, the little Allen head. I forget what size screw these are. I then lay it sideways and put Loctite on all the screws. From here on out, I Loctite pretty much everything. I didn't really Loctite the frame because I, I felt like if I needed to take it apart and move it somewhere, I didn't want to battle that too much. But I guess in hindsight, I probably could have Loctited the frame. Right here, you can see the little blocks they give you and you clamp it up tight, flush to the front and I, I moved these blocks all along it to make sure it just stayed really straight. And I thought this, this linear rail is probably one of the more important pieces. Um, this is what your machine's gonna be running back and forth on and I wanted to make sure it was really straight. So I, moved, I basically moved these clamps every six inches and then tightened it up and then I went back through afterwards and 
and retighten it. And do the same thing on the other side. Use the blocks, clamp it. Those little blocks are just a jig to make sure it stays in the right spot. For a while I was using a small ball head Allen, um, but it, I ended up breaking two. So I'm, now I have a socket head, socket head Allen. You can see here I'm, I move it every, probably every six or eight inches and then tighten them up. It turned out really nice and straight and flat, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, it looks like the, a lot of the parts that go into making this machine didn't didn't get delivered. Apparently, because of the the freight situation and the you know boats being, I don't know what I don't know what the reason is, but a lot of the, I'm missing a lot of parts. So uh, part one, this, I'm not going to get as far. I could have got a lot farther, but I I basically came to a standstill because I the the next thing to put on in the list is linear bearings and they and I, they didn't deliver me any so i'm going to have to be patient and i talked to them today they have really good customer service and even though i was disappointed that my delivery got delivered with a lot of missing parts um the customer service is really good and he was really um i talked to him today and he basically um yeah, he was, you know, he's doing the best he can with the situation. So I'm just going to have to be patient. I, I still am happy with everything. I just, uh, hopefully I'll get the, some parts pretty soon. Otherwise, part two might be a long way off. Anyway, that's the installation of the linear rail. Next up was this gear track. And same thing, you use the, these, these had some, um, button head cap screws and then the same sliding t the same t nut um, and and you basically slid this thing on same way and then you use there's two gear tracks on each side and for one side you can use one of the gear tracks to line it up really nice and clamp it and they show it right here but when you get to the other side you no longer have a extra piece to do that but let me show you how I did it same thing. These, these ha this this one has button head screws, some short little button head screws, and then some T nuts, and basically you just put them through there, lock tight them, put the T nut on. Pretty easy, you know. This reminds me of a. I don't know if when you're a kid if you ever had an erector set, but when I was a kid I had an erector set and we used to make you know all these little th things together and try to make things and this reminds me of an erector set with so many screws and I actually enjoyed I enjoyed it I wish I had the rest of the parts I'd probably be done with this thing already but it is what it is sometimes in life you have to you have to be patient anyway there's four of these to do they're all the same size and when you slide them on there they're basically going to be four inches away from each end. Here you can see I slide the first one on. Then the second one. Measure from the corner four inches. And then you clamp this track on the bottom. This keeps all the teeth nice and lined up. I like these C-clamps. I've used these for years doing, used to clamp them to the stakes when we were doing, setting forms. They worked really well. Right there I get it clamped up nice and start tightening her up. 
I'm surprised, surprised that Milwaukee drill is still working. I've had that a long time. Just shows you how good Milwaukee tools are. Well, I guess that's going to be it for this uh, part one. Since I ran out of parts, I'm just going to torque all these down really nice and tight. And anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you next time. Later.